the counterintuitive thing is that anytime you have a, a crop that's more stress tolerant, it actually opens up all sorts of management options to, to take advantage of that tolerance even in good years. And so you pack the crop more densely, you give it more fertilizer, you really try to push it to the maximum in terms of how much water it has. And so it's not actually obvious whether these new technologies are going to be used for reducing the effects of drought or just for overall raising the, the productivity in any year. The main implication to me is that we can't look at technologies as both allowing us to increase the productivity overall of agriculture and allowing us to escape the impacts of climate change. But I think often there's a double counting of these technologies. I think some people would say, uh, we have lots of corn, the prices of corn are pretty low, so you know, what's the big deal if we're getting a little bit more sensitive to drought if, if climate is reducing the productivity a little bit. You know, if we were somehow able to reduce the amount of land that we're using to grow food because we were so productive that that would free up a lot of land for other purposes. We use a lot of land right now to grow food and if we can start to ramp that down, that would have all sorts of benefits. There is some good news here, which is that these are things that we've had a really tough time tracking historically. And the fact now that we can use satellite data and detailed soil data to really understand year by year how uh, the, the new growing practices, the new crops are doing in terms of dealing with water stress is, a, is going to allow us to track much more carefully as we go forward how well farmers are adapting to climate change if they are.